Get in the Gate, this is episode 164. We are talking Stargate SG1. The Get in the Gate team is here. My name is Mitch. Joining me, as always, Matty Gibson. Well, hello. And Brendan Gibson. How you doing, G'day. boys? Yeah. Fellas. Okay. Isolation, what, week five of the podcast? I'm, I'm losing track, but we are here in isolation. As I think it's seven. Right. Oh, week five, isn't it? Jesus yeah, it's Christ. Be, I mean, we had a couple Boring. of weeks off in the middle there, but... Yeah, it sucks because we've been looking forward to Atlantis for so long. And I know we're talking SG1 today, but most of our Atlantis chats have been done in isolation where we haven't been able to like mm. either geek out in person or record them in the same quality as we were so used to. But uh, look, we are talking Affinity. You guys talked it up last week. Uh, we did Atlantis and you said, uh, look, it's another Tilk episode, as was our last SG1, and that I might have some memory of it because I haven't watched it a long time compared to you blokes. So when it opened knew exactly what we were going to be in store for, um, although uh, I didn't remember a lot of it. So I'm going to get into the into the uh, old synopsis, then we can start breaking it down because we all had a lot of fun with Teal'c in this episode, I want to say. This is like, this is Teal'c 5000 in all the best ways. Given clearance to live off base, Teal'c tries in vain to blend in as an ordinary citizen, but when his unwavering ethical code and compels him to help ordinary people in trouble, specifically a neighbour with him, abusive boyfriend he soon finds himself thrust into a few things but into the spotlight as the prime suspect in the boyfriend's murder he got thrust into her plumbing <laughs> do you do you think I mean, between, I uh... mean the hints were all there at the start my plumbing <laughs> needs assistance i'll f- bet it does mm. <laughs> i've clogged it last do you night, think... didn't i do you think between the A story of Teal and Krista and the B story of Sam and Pete, this episode just should have been called Women in Abusive Relationships? <laughs> <laughs> because and of Teal's, like, a weapon is required? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just, and, I'm talking about Doug. I'm talking about Doug. Yeah. And yet here I was, like... He- I'm, I'm glad I was. I got the heads up last week from you guys. It was like, oh, Teal'c in his apartment. And I'm like, oh, that's right. There's a girl involved. It's it's Erica Durant who plays Lois Lane because I was keeping an eye on the opening credits and her name did pop up. So I'm glad I didn't get it spoiled for me like as I went into it thinking it was going to be fresh. But also popping up, David Deloise. And I'm like, oh, f- yeah, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, great. But then there's more Deloise because it says written by Peter Deloise, directed by Peter Deloise. I'm like, okay, cool. Why so- would you do that to your own brother? <laughs> Yeah, he's into some weird stuff. Same as um, Bill Lawrence, who um, created Scrubs. He's the guy Mm. who created Scrubs. He put his wife on that show, the chick from the Drew Carey show, and just made her just make out with every lead actor on the show. And they all were like, "Uh, he's into that. He he enjoys that, I think, a little bit too much. Mm. So maybe, maybe Pete gets a little bit of a... A cheap thrill. I mean, we don't, I don't mean you two are brothers. I'm not. Well, I'm a, I have sisters, so that would be brothers. weirder. But I'm, we might as well yeah. be, though, right? You know what I'm no. saying? No. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, my God. I mean, it works every time. I mean, you have brothers, so I'm sure you two have lived vicariously through your much more attractive younger brothers. I mean, who said that? <laughs> Wasn't a way <laughs> We'll let them peak in their thirties, and then we'll come back. It'll be fine. <laughs> we'll shed these twenty kilos that we've had, so they can catch up. It's just baby weight, guys. It's just baby weight. It's just a favour we've done because they couldn't cop for so many years. <laughs> <laughs> what is that with baby weight? Like, women gain baby weight during pregnancy, then they quickly lose it as they get back to themselves. Men just like, oh, I'll gain the same baby weight, but over mm. like a prolonged 15, 20, 25 year period and just never fully recover. They're like, hey, you want to have hot dogs weight. tonight? And I'm like, f*** yeah. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Sick, I'm not eating them, but you can <laughs> eat them. Well, my wife at the moment I'll have like, a salad. My wife's like been on a, on a pretty strict diet like the last six months and she'll eat and then she oh, I'm full. Here, you can eat this. I'm having like a meal and a half every night. And lo and behold, I hate myself right now. Yeah, um, I so it's just working out wonderful. There's a, a girl Welcome I used to, to work mate. with and every, every, <laughs> there's a, every time she had her uh, lady time, she was always just like, do you just want to go and get something really unhealthy for lunch? And I'm like, sure, okay, let's go. You be, you be smashing dim, you be smashing dim sims at eleven fifteen in the morning. <laughs> and saying that, I've got some spring rolls in the fridge. I'm going to heat up right after we record this podcast. So, oh yeah, I've got a lunch appointment at Krispy Kremes. You can- <laughs> <laughs> I had Cinnabon for the first time the other day. Got to say, very overrated. Very oh, overrated. No, I, I really, I, I didn't mind it actually. 
I mean, if they want to sponsor the show, great people. But yes, for sure. Isn't that where yeah. Saul great Goodman people. works now? Maybe. Maybe that's where I first heard of it. But I can't say for sure. Be lucky to work time. at a Cinnabon after this. <laughs> no, I, th- I think <laughs> my, my first introduction to it was Homer Simpson. Simpson. Or maybe, 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 maybe Peter Griffin. Griffin. Some, Some fat, fat cartoon, cartoon character. character. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, the funny thing about Pete, I know there was so much about this episode is really tilt, but just while we were speaking about Pete, there were those moments where he does that really weird, like, stare into her face because he thinks that's what looking lovingly like is into my lover's mm. eyes and it just looks really creepy and then he asked her to marry him and stuff and there was moments like oh god oh, do I really have to give you more time but then there was later on the episode where he's he like I felt sorry for him when like um, when Carter said to O'Neill he asked me to marry him and I told him I needed time he goes that's fine he goes yeah that was two weeks ago oh, oh my god <laughs> like, my wife made me wait about three seconds, seconds and that seemed like a yeah. f- eternity and I knew she was going to say yes yeah me that's too my wife was pregnant right? when I proposed <laughs> yeah. oh that's what I was about to say was... and I stood See? and she's like really I'm uh, like yeah <laughs> obviously like yeah. this is the, the well, this is actually the first step we've already done the second step we do a backwards here in Australia and <laughs> we like it. going back in time <laughs> it's like in it's like in France where they have dessert before dinner it's fine yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I completely forgot about the Pete storyline in this episode. I, I, should, oh, yeah. I completely forget about it every time. For me, it's just Teal'c and Krista. But something I thought was interesting was, like, Pete basically, like, acknowledged his stalkering mm. and tried to make it seem cute that he was aware of it. He's like, Mm-mm. like, it's cute. Like, it's this movie how I stalk. I was like, no. Nah. Yeah, we do uh, remember you yeah. f- <laughs> we remember exactly what you were like. You- and then it's it's almost like the writers were like deliberately trying to like obviously because the fan base wasn't a fan of Pete from the get go, so it's almost like you know Peter DeLuise is trying to like oh we're in on the joke we know that he's a creepy stalker he's gonna own it and that's gonna make him charming and I'm like being a DeLuise only gets you so far mate. <laughs> the thing is too he at the start of that sentence he kind of questioned the relationship status in terms of like, hey, my girlfriend's a superhero and she's like, huh, hardly. And he's like, what, hardly you're a superhero or hardly you're my girlfriend? It's like, <laughs> and then next minute he says, I'm moving to Colorado Springs, which should have been the biggest news of the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should have been full stop. He, have- she was cool with that. Next minute, here's a ring. The whole thing yeah. it just made the whole like- episode awkward. Move, live together for six months before you propose, mate. Like, I get that she's so far out of your league, you want to lock her in quick. <laughs> yes. But, mate, just her reaction pump breaks. Was, oh my god! And that was actually <laughs> I said it before her. I was like, oh yeah, my god! Give it like, and he, the she last. Was like, oh my god! <laughs> like two different OMGs. The last time we saw. Um, he, we saw Pete. He was, you know, fifth pretending to be Pete in a creepy, <laughs> abusive, you know, dream. And then the time we actually saw Pete the time before that was like when they first met and they were just dating. Yeah. And it's like, like, I get that was like a season ago now, but it's like, guys, pump the brakes. And again, just, as I know- like relatively the new watcher, because I haven't seen these episodes in 15 years. When he asks her to marry him and then she makes him wait, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. This must be how they write him out. And then at the end of the, yeah. episode, the, end of the episode, she says, I will marry you. And I'm like, whoa, man, mm. they're going to have to work really hard to write this prick out now. Um, and, like, as far as I know, they go on and get married and have children. I mean, I, I, I know that, well, I don't know that that doesn't definitely happen. I, I forget where this goes next. That's the point. It just seems like now you're making it... Like we just said, they acknowledge his stalkerism. They're acknowledging the fact that the fan base didn't warm to him. So I'm like, oh, they're going to set him up. He's, he's giving this like, not ultimatum, but it's like an all or nothing situation. Do you want to marry me? No, I don't. Oh, that, okay, well, I guess we've got no future sort of thing. Otherwise, you would know. And then we just write him off that way. And then now it's like, no, we're going to really link him in with her. We're going to really tie them together through marriage. And it's like, shit. Yeah. This is and, so much uh, harder to like get him out of the show if you choose that you want to do that and give O'Neill and Carter the fairy tale ending that they kind of again tease to in this episode. Like, sir, if things have been different, he goes, yeah, well, I wouldn't be here. Anyway, catch you later. Which mm. for me, that line was like, could be taken two ways. Like, if you were into me, I wouldn't be here, so it wouldn't yeah. be a problem. Also, if I was into you, 
I wouldn't be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I'm here for a reason. Obviously, I don't dig you that much. Yeah. <laughs> um, turns out Amanda Tapping fucking hated this episode. Really? Hated it. She did hated a it. Great hated job. It. If she yeah. hated it, because she yeah. was amazing. Yeah. Well, Wheel in the Piano Boys. Oh! If, if we can in ISO, I don't know how we can in ISO, but let's just you well, know. We did last are, week. We are paying him more. <laughs> Graham, pay, pay, he charges extra when he has. Well, he didn't even turn up last week. We said g'day. Was it last mm. week or the week before? We said g'day. No, I'm complimented on his giant schlong, and he just. Yeah. Yeah. I hate childhood end so much. I still haven't listened to our podcast from last week yet. <laughs> <laughs> I caught it in the Discord party. Ah. Oh yeah! Big shout out to everyone on Discord. Thanks for making. Yeah, that. well done, guys. Uh, here's what Amanda Tapping had to say about this episode. To this day, when I watch the episode, I go, Carter wouldn't have done that. She wouldn't have done that there, and she wouldn't have done what she did in that situation. I mean, when Carter says yes to Pete's proposal, she does it at the end of a mission and a stakeout, and it's dumb. Hmm. She wouldn't yeah. do that because it's totally inappropriate, and I was angry at the way it was handled. For Carter, it would have been a private moment. It was something she would have dealt with on the outside of the realms of work because no matter how much she feels for this guy and no matter how much she's op- he's opened her up, I mean, it's opened her up, work is work and her work will always be the most important thing to her. She's been absolutely open about that from the word go. So it bothered me that it was like, oh, well, this is how we'll fit into this script. I had a long talk with our executive producer, Robert Cooper. Pause. Tim oh. Cooper. <laughs> And see the wisdom of what he was saying, no! but when the but I when that, the, mate. <laughs> this is the best part, she says. But when the audience watches the show and sees the ending, I want them to understand that I, Amanda Tapping, thought it was inappropriate. Wow! Here, here, Amanda. Boom! Thank you, Amanda. Clap yeah. it out. And it is inappropriate. It is inappropriate because of that proposal. Yeah. I just felt like. He, like I said before, that I'm moving to Colorado Springs would have been really nice as a as kind of the big conversation piece for the Carter storyline. But because mm. the proposal left a, a weird taste in your mouth, it felt like Carter was stringing Pete along, which isn't really fair to Amanda's character, mm. to Carter or the audience, mm. I think. And the, when she asks him for help, it, it should have just been like as a girlfriend asking for help instead of it felt weird. It felt like she's like, oh, I haven't made a decision yet. So, but can you help me? Mm-hmm. And then it felt like Carter said yes, because she felt like she owed him one. Yeah. Before that, I was actually pretty thankful that um, like beyond the awkward, like, oh, I know I haven't said yes, but this is important. I want you to do something else for me. That moment where they called each other and he goes, hey, look, I've looked into this and we've tracked it down to a um, a license plate from this rental company. And, and she's like, do they have satellite tracking? Look, I'll go and look into it and I'll get back to you. There was no awkward like, you know... I'm doing this for you and you still haven't given me an answer and, and yeah. like, I'm, gl- I'm glad that didn't happen like he got in the car I, I made a point of watching no, that but scene. I could feel that oh mm. you're right that's the thing I was waiting for Pete at the end of that he got in the car put the mobile down and closed the door and I'm like I'm waiting for him to do something or say something that will suggest that he was right on the tip of his tongue he was ready to, to bring up the proposal and I thought this isn't the time for it and she's in full like military mode I've got to save a friend blah 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 you're a cop and I'm like I actually then in that in that one scene I started to see this is how you could be really useful to the yes. team even though you're not part of the military you're you're part of the police force you're outside of Cheyenne Mountain but you're still able to help them in a, in a very professional type way they, oh this is cool they're doing him a favor here but you're right like he wasn't done a great service early on with the proposal and then come the end she's not going to great service it didn't bother me as much watching it but i can completely understand what amanda tapping is talking about because yeah as far as we've seen from carter so far like she is a person but she is 100 percent loyal to the job and the mission at the time yeah yeah i feel i feel like this whole episode i think honestly Pete, he could have turned around for us, the audience, mm. in in the way that he's helping Carter out. He's not asking for anything in return, which he always has. The, the proposal ruins all of that good gear. That's what I mean. Like, it, it could have really turned around Pete for us yeah. with that yeah. really... It's not, him going too far scene. again. Yeah. And it's just too... It's too weird. He just... It's, he's weird. 
<laughs> That's why we don't like him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it could have been. It could have been him acknowledging how much her work means to her. Now that he knows what it is, yeah. it could have just been a really nice gesture and saying, "Look, I know how much your work means to you. And I know how much time it takes up for you, but I want you to know that I'm in. I want to be in this." I'm going to move to Colorado so yeah, I can be yes. closer to you because I know how much your work means to you. That's all it needed to be. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Because we get all that. When he says, I am I put in a transfer to here, that was him saying, you're out there saving the planet every other week. Like, I want to still do my job, but I can do a service to the community in the job that I want to do here and let you do your thing. Like, I got that, but you're right. That We didn't... Okay, like what I'm saying, we're reading that even though they didn't speak it. They didn't need to say it in dialogue. But it would have been nice to have him, like you said, Brennan, that's his way of warming to the audience. We don't need to just assume that's what he meant because then we still think of him the same way. But if he actually speaks those words, while it's fluff stuff that we can understand without dialogue, it gives us a chance to watch that actor and that character say those words and work on us as an audience for the next 20 or 30 seconds. So, yeah, yeah, I felt like you're right. They they just moved too fast. And that's why I thought being a relative first time of watching this episode, oh, this is how he gets written out because it's too much too quickly. And in the end, mm. it wasn't. And I'm like, oh, that just still seems like it's... Yeah, it doesn't it's feel only, right. Yeah, it's half as bad as what he was the last time we met him with the stakeout episode. But still, it was it was not what he needed, I think. To mm. I reckon um, Peter did his, did his own writing a disservice and he should have... What you could do yeah. is really just cut out that last line of the scene after he says, I'm moving to Colorado Springs. She's like, really? He's mm. like, yeah, end that scene. And then you don't worry about the yes at the end yeah I mean, you and then you would have really enjoyed I, I think I would have enjoyed Pete this episode yeah yeah and then it's like they even kind of missed out at the end like I feel like what needed to be the moment for her to say yes was Pete to do something heroic or you know something where she thought she was going to lose him like he was going to sacrifice himself she thought he, she was going to lose him and that's what made her realize internally oh, God, I actually don't want to lose him, mm. so I will say yes. Chimera, how they did that whole... Yeah. Sarah shoots at him or near him or... Uh, did she shoot him? I can't remember now. Oh, I remember um, Sarah Sarah shot the truck, like the petrol tank of the truck, Yeah. and it explodes and he gets hit with shrapnel and then she's like, oh, if you survive this, I'll tell you about my job. And then when he's in the infirmary in Shine Mountain, too, he tells her... Um, Shimmera or Chimera, as we like to call it, is actually <laughs> <laughs> season seven. I think it's episode fifteen. So in like in show, they haven't even been together for a year, mm. and he's just popping yeah. the question. It's just and, it's just too much. And he's living he's living elsewhere. Yeah, long distance as well. It's super weird. Mm. Super super weird. I'd maybe knock her up first, then you'd have to. But <laughs> we've all been there. But, I mean, yeah, who's... Hey, high five, Brennan. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> who's in a worse relationship, Sam and Pete or uh, Kristen and Doug, big ball Doug? Oh, uh, Doug, what a piece of shit he is. Oh, with some giant balls. Like, how? Like you two enjoy a tipple. You, How drunk would you have to be to threaten someone who looks like Teal'c? Not like, too far gone. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I'd drunk confidence, but I'd probably do it. Like... Like drunk enough to know that if he hits you, you're not going to feel it. Is that is that the level you've got to get no to? Reason, Maddie, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say at least twelve. And see, I'd yeah, forgotten wow. too. Like when when she pops up in the episode, she comes along and says, "Ah, oh, can you help me with you know my uh, my uh, my plumbing again? It's doing that thing, and ah, oh, the soup is never around. You know, my oh, my boyfriend's not at home or whatever." And oh I yeah, she was- mentions that early. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, that's oh, she got a boyfriend. That's weird because I'm pretty sure they get together in this episode. But maybe she's just like the the writers are planting a seed. Maybe we'll catch up in three or four episodes, and then they get together. Someone was and planting a seed, absolutely. And um, and then you meet him, and it's like, oh, okay, he's a drunk abuser. Like, oh, okay, well, this is clearly going to end in about four minutes, and Teal's going to like put one through it, basically. But- <laughs> Wow, that's that's some true luck romance right oh, there. Dude, as soon as she came, I will in, indeed put pipes, one through you. My pipes are doing that thing, and even Daniel Jackson, the biggest square in the universe, goes. Jesus, I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, the Teal- biggest player in the universe. Trust me, bro. Uh, uh, this is- <laughs> I know. This, I know. I know that line. <laughs> I know. Together as a team, we cock blocked O'Neill and Carter last year. I'm not doing that to you, bro. I got you. I got you, fam. Every rule yeah. has an exception. Do you know- 
Right. It was enough to make me forgive Daniel for doing the the number one no no, the pop in. Like that is that is a social faux pas right there. Daniel just doing the pop in. Mm. I was like, how dare you? How dare you? And then you know he helped Tilk out at the end. So I'm like, okay, I, f- I, I kind of forgive you. That was before everybody became socially awkward, though. It wasn't such a big deal. No, nah, the pop-in. In, in mate, 05, Se- Seinfeld in the 80s was talking about how terrible the pop-in is, how he's <laughs> not a fan Seinfeld, of the pop-in. He's, a, yeah, he's well, ahead of his you know, time, mate. It's my boy. <laughs> so, yeah, not, not, a, not a fan of the pop-in. Not a fan of the pop-in at all. <laughs> but Pupper. what I realised, too, is if you listen really closely to, to what um, Daniel says, because, you know, Daniel goes there because of that, that suit that came and spoke to Jack about, you know, Tilk you know, being too too, too superhero and stuff. <laughs> it made me realise that conversation should have been with Jack. Like, Jack should have been the one to go to Teal's ha- house and talk to him about that. But obviously, with their reduced Richard D. Anderson availabilities, mm. that's why Daniel's gone out to do it. But, I mean, oh, Jack yeah, and Tilk you don't like, see Jack and Tilk, like, in his old quarters at the SGC either. Mm. Did Jack and Tilk have a scene together at all in this episode? No. Yeah, see... You missed that. You missed that intro. Not right. He told me he didn't do it, and uh, I believe him. Mm. Can we see that, please? Instead of this Colonel Dick. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's actually his name. That's a funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, Dick. I mean, just to go back uh. right to the uh, right to the start. It, it, I I thought I was watching almost like a cut scene from a fan film that just they managed to get Teal into it because I'm like, <laughs> this, is, this is the grating opening scene. Of Stargate history. Tilk just comes along and just whoops asses and says yeah. the shit you want him to say, throws the punches at the people you want him to punch, and it's all done to some, like, rap music or some shit, and then it cuts to black. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, what the <laughs> f*** did I just watch? I loved it, <laughs> but it seems like it should have been a dream that I yeah. never got to experience in real seems life. Seems like it should have been written by Joe and Paul because it's Earthbound and we don't see the Stargate. Oh, so. my God, yes. What the f***? Yeah. Don't worry, I've got my checklist for Earthbound Abs, and this one ticks a lot of boxes. Yeah. Well, I've got a couple of bits of trivia for you. Um, starting with that fender bender scene right at the start, the three thugs that get out of the of the car, there's, like, the main skinhead guy, then there's his old mate with the shitty sunglasses on, and then there's the black guy that comes around the other side. Mm. That, that black guy is Tilk's dad. He played Tilk's dad back in Crossroads. Remember when Tilk was communing with his um, symbiote and he saw a flashback of Cronus killing his dad? I thought you meant Chris Judge. Yeah. No. I was like, my God, how what? old is that man? Age? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's amazing. There, yeah, so he he played Tilk's dad, who was first prime of Cronus back in right. season four. Yeah. But yeah, the yeah. cool thing about the Chris family connection is also we spoke about in the past that Erica Durant's is in real life married to Sokar slash Anubis, um, the, the actor who plays those characters. Well, Erica Durance's sister is married to Chris Judge's sister. So, Erica Durance is his sister-in-law, basically. Get the fuck. Not on that day, though, right? I don't know of how no, when so. they all got <laughs> oh, together. Hang on, hang on. Chris so, what, hang on. I hope so. Give me that again. So, sorry. Er- so, Erica Durance is married to Sokar slash yes. Anubis. That's irrelevant. Erica's, point. yeah, <laughs> Erica's sister is married to Teal'c's real-life brother, Chris Judge's real-life brother, who appears in the show later this season as another as another Jafar. So it's his sister-in-law. Yeah. So it's direct. Oh Jesus. Well, I guess I guess uh, Chris Judge's direct sister-in-law would be Erica Durant's sister. So it's like Erica Durant is the sister of his sister-in-law. Yes. Yes. Still, yes. it's close enough. Like, like I bet he's got a together. Yeah, oh, he's got a. What did you that, romantically say? Bad. Throw one through her. <laughs> but I mean, that was it. With that first kiss of theirs, while it was under like you know in in weird circumstances in a hotel room, it was like I think we're okay. I think that uh, you know your boyfriend's not following us, and oh, it's really weird. We're in a motel. Ah, like he just started like eating her face. Yeah. And not because <laughs> I thought she was going to disappear in those sleeps. <laughs> not, not, my yeah. God. Yeah. not because he's a bad Who kisser want to? Or, or or not as passionate. It's just he is so big, and like she mm. kissed him, and then he just like. Doesn't grab like grab seems <laughs> aggressive, but just like grabs her head and just like he, he puts his mouth over her yeah. face. And I'm just like, oh, you you know you're getting kissed when you're getting kissed by Chris Judge, bitch. 
Damn. <laughs> yeah, those, those lie, big size me. differences. Oh, see, you know, freaks me out. I'm like, it looks like he's kissing a toddler. Like, it's just not right. No, it's it's like my my niece. My niece <laughs> is tiny. Bit, but... Yeah, no. <laughs> Scratch that from the record. It's not, my... what said. not what he said. Yeah. Right? My niece is tiny. My niece is like four foot tall. Don't say toddler and niece. Stop bringing niece no, into it. Because, let me finish, because her boyfriend is like 6'4". Like she's four foot and he's 6'4". He looks like know, he's walking I've his daughter that. around. I've seen But they're dating. Life. It's weird. I actually weird. off in the car later that night. <laughs> 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 oh. Wow. I do like a good size comparison on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, the solar system, how you see the sun. Oh, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> Versus Jupiter and shit. It's hot. It's hot. The sun's hot. Wow. Um, well, and some, some, other trivi- some other trivia that I found is... Oh, um, keep going. <laughs> well, the role of Krista um, that Erica Durant plays, that role was originally planned for... A um, Claud- No, Claudia Black. Who- what? Oh, Claudia, damn! Claudia Thank Black God. was was originally kind of chosen for that role, but she was busy filming um, Peacekeeper Wars, the oh, Fast Eight Peacekeeper yeah, she Wars, was. so she was unavailable. <laughs> That's a good show. Oh, so good! If, like, so if you good. haven't seen it, do yourself a goddamn favor. <laughs> go and watch the whole thing from start to finish. Season one. Just work through it. It's not the greatest of all time. Oh, once Chiana rocks up in like episode ten or fifteen or whatever, then it's gold. It's great. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I gotta be honest. I'm torn because mm-hmm. if Claudia Black Blackhead have been this role, Krista, then we don't get Erica Durant, who is looking. Oh my god! Wow, hot in this. Like I like mm. her in Smallville, but my god, the bangs. Where are, is? I don't know what's going on. This she was younger than Smallville. For sure. yeah, where yeah, is? Yeah, I, I, where is this in relation to Smallville? Had she wrapped by this point, or no, Smallville was, still running? Smallville is definitely still going by this stage because this was like what? Well, remember she five? didn't come in till late, right? Season it's not like four. Oh yeah, that's was right. It that early. Yeah, I want to say that it was season. Four. Yeah, same season that um, Jensen Ackles joined. Season four. Yeah, okay. Oh, he was sure. in early. He was in season one, Jensen Ackles. Wasn't he the coach? No. Yeah, he was the coach. Yeah, that, no, he was only in for one season. He was in the witch season in like season three or four. Yeah, right. So that was is- when they tried to turn Lana Lang into a witch for some reason. Because <laughs> Small, <'cause> Smallville. <laughs> because Smallville. Oh, yeah. Shit. Hang on. God, that show was a mess. It showed, oh, like, I loved it. Like,. But it's Dawson's Creek with superhero. That's all it is. Yes, season one. I've just, I've season just gotten, one sorry, holds up right to next me. to my Stargate DVDs is Smallville because obviously alphabetical. Because mm-hmm. alphabetical, there she is. obviously. It's complete fourth How season. Hot is Tom Welling. Yeah. Oh mate, Jesus Christ! I'd I'm still climbing like a tree. That bloke. Uh, what? This is weird. Um, <laughs> that's so, that oh, season on. one promo on. show. Well, look that- at this though. On the back of the DVD of this particular season, it's copyrighted as 2004, <laughs> and then Smallville for season four, where Erica Durant first pops in, it's. Co- uh, copyrighted at 2005, so there's not much in between. But I tell you what, oh, uh, she I wasn't. It, she wasn't like a weekly a main player yeah. either. So what you're saying is, a year after or six months after she was having one, what was that delightful term? Having one thrown through or by Teal'c, <laughs> she was then playing a high school student. Well, yeah, more awkward. than one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but what I was. Trying to, I mean, yeah, I just, I, I watched this and I was like, oh my God, now I'm re-falling in love with Erica Durant in the mid-2000s all over again. So we would have had Claudia Black instead of Erica Durant, which I fancied for longer than Claudia Black. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not saying anything bad. But then to get Claudia Black in this episode mean we wouldn't have to, she would have been a one and done character. And because I'm not, a, I'm not a massive fan of Vala. I've got to be honest. I've said this. Oh, I'm a huge Vala fan. I know you are. And, anyway, and Lincoln and I have said it. I'm 50-50. I'm, I think I'm only yeah. a Vala fan because I'm such an Aaron Sun fan. Yeah, and that's the thing. I, I, mm. I eventually, and I'm, I'm not. I'm going to pretend like I'm even going to think about promising that Farscape is next on my rewatch list or watch list of any description. I do want to watch it because you no, know, I just know like a watch list. Like, hang on, what's? Oh going my on? god! I'm sorry. We're doing a video call, and literally it's, a Homer Simpson mask has just walked into the room. It's time for Badana's cameo. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I. Wa- she can't hear me, can you? Can she? No. Nah, nah, okay. Nah. I was going to be filthy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I 
is that, is that wow. Homer Simpson's got Homer Simpson's got breasts, but they don't quite look like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, did she pull that Gip mask out of your sex drawer? Is that where that Homer Simpson mask goes? I've got a costume bag, obviously. Don't you? <laughs> when did you? Where? Where? And when? Did, I'm so I'm fascinated now. Stargate. I want to talk about when and where this this Homer Simpson mask popped up in your yeah. uh, in your house, and how often you role play with it. <laughs> well, I'm glad never with that mask. I'm glad. I'm glad never too. Because sure. your, your kids are watching two episodes a night, and, and then later on they walk in and they go, "Mum was getting fucked by Homer Simpson." <laughs> oh no! I started the other way around. I, I had, had Homer. I had Daddy was. Home and right in his donut hole, like just mmm <laughs> donuts. Mm, he was, he was just sprinkles. Da- Daddy was icing some donuts, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh god! Oh, we've gotten so far off any kind of. I don't even know what kind of track we went track to track to track. It's like some. Kind you were talking of- about your love of Claudia Black oh, of all I de- things. I definitely then- wasn't, but um, anyway, good to hear <laughs> uh, pop up in this. But um, I was going to say that uh, we were talking about the. The start scene. Mm. I think my my favorite bit of all in that whole scene, like it was, like it was a fan made film, basically. Mm. Like you said, Mitch. My favorite bit was Tilk had the guy's wrist, and it wasn't even like an upright uh, um, grab from Tilk. It was mm. like the reverse. Yeah, so really. Yeah. The guy should have been able to get away, pull his arm away, but he was he couldn't. Mm. Tell it's he got Tilk's, vice vice Tilk's just like, I got you, bitch. And he was just trying to pull away, and he's like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Tries to punch him with the other hand, and he's just yeah. fucked. Like, and then he headbutts him. That's my favorite bit. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> no, he put him to the floor. <laughs> and so yeah. I started thinking, too, like, whenever he's fought Jafar, like, obviously, Tilk, he's Jafar, so he's stronger. He's got the symbiote running through, at least in the past, but he's got that additional strength that a human clearly doesn't. But because the Jafar is such expendable. Bad guys and henchmen at this point, and you know, a lot of them are faceless. You know, they're the stormtroopers, they just get shot and done 20 or 30 an episode per battle whenever we might see them. I don't really respect them as a formidable foe at this point. Tilk's just like he's special, he's next level, yeah. but clearly they're not the compared to <laughs> humans when. Tilt comes up against his three regular, like, gym junkie guys in the start of this episode. He is so much better than them. And he knows, like, he can read their body language. He goes up and goes, you probably shouldn't do that. And that's that's not the way that we do things. Perhaps you should call the police now because you definitely indicated all that sort of shit. And he says it with such a smug look on his face because he knows that he's right. He knows that he can take them. But they still go While wearing him. linen pants. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, like, they... Like, he, he was... He was approaching the situation like he could take them so very easily, which I loved. But then when he punched them, I'm like, dude, you are punching them so much harder than you have ever Ever attacked attacked an actual (laughs) f***ing bad guy in this episode. You've never attacked Apophis like this. You've never attacked 20 henchmen Jafar. Like, he f***ing destroyed those three guys with one punch. It's an earthbound ep, mate. He's just linebacker. (laughs) Oh, my God. He... Kill those guys. But I feel like I feel like humans are a lot weaker in this episode too. Like later on when he takes out that kid with the avocado, the purse snatcher. <laughs> like A, avocado. Yeah. B knocks the kid to the ground and no one thinks to oh that slowed him down. Wasn't ripe yet. It didn't even like break. Like when it hit him, it fell to the floor as a solid avocado. Yeah, like exactly. how hard could it have hit no, him? Have you, you to knock him out? Yeah. yeah. I always that- thought it was a rock melon or something mm. like you know in my memory See, i didn't remember but when he when he, i saw him do it and f- yeah this is more for our australian um listeners than it is for anyone else around the world but there's a great scene like that in the first crocodile dundee movie where i'm pretty sure it's a purse snatcher as well and uh out of someone shopping and he picks up like does he is he actually pick up like a can of like baked beans essentially like it's something quite solid like a metal I haven't seen those movies in forever Campbell's oh, Soup maybe Campbell's Soup type thing and he picks it up and he throws it in a busy New York street and knocks this bloke clean on the head and knocks him down that makes sense that's a metallic object with quite solid shit in the middle of it but like you said what he picked up and I'm like that looks like fruit that's not going to do anything. But my Christ, he went from linebacker to quarterback. Like mm. the he threw it. That guy ran for another six seconds before it hit him. Like he his like his yeah. judgment is fucking impeccable. And then Erica Durant looked at him like I yeah. will fuck you right now because of how amazing that was. 
what do you what do you think about that scene? I always thought that score, the music score, was really strange. Yeah, yeah. Like it was something really sinister that Tilk did. <clears throat> like I know that they're saying, "Watch your, Daniel said, watch yourself, don't muck around. Mm. You know, don't get intervene." But mm. that, I don't know that. Listen to it again, but that that yeah. score was so well, weird. My issue is like like what you just said, Mitch. Is like you know, Erica Durant was like, "We're gonna f- right now." I think she'd already said that and used a euphemism because five seconds before the purse snatcher, she says, "Oh, just wait until you taste my lasagna." <laughs> but then she's but then she's got avocados in her shopping, and I'm like, "Well, wait, like you don't put avocado in lasagna." Well, I don't. Some people put some weird shit in some weird foods, but... I just think, right. you like know, multi-layered, multi-layered, yeah. multi-layered meat and pasta. I mean, that's a vagina analogy if ever I've heard one. <laughs> you know, she, the first thing she says was, I baked you cookies. Then it's, wait until you taste my lasagna. Come and fix my plumbing. My boyfriend's yeah. an abusive prick. Like, my pipes are doing that thing again. Yeah, yeah. I bet they are. Like... Yeah. <laughs> I actually thought when you guys said that it was the apartment, I thought, like, we actually saw him go to buy the apartment or put a rent on it or whatever. Like, I didn't think that he'd already lived off base, but it was it was a nice way to actually catch up on that story when, you know, that incident and immediately there's that, what do they call them? The I, the OIS? Oh, I wrote it down, the OSI, the Office OSI. of Special Investigations. Yeah, and so they're already, like, keeping an eye on him going, look, he's an alien. I mean, less so than the trust later, which I love them, <laughs> them saying, like... We can't trust him, you know, like, he's an alien, he is an alien, he's an alien, we just can't trust aliens because they've got alien sensibilities. And it's like, hasn't he, re- like, saved the planet multiple times? Like, yeah, obviously we're okay with him saving the planet, but if he wants to go live by himself, man, he's an alien, we don't trust him. No. Yeah, and I'm like, I know yeah. we're supposed to not like you guys, but Jesus Christ, you make up some dumb f- arguments you know and then the weirdest thing is the head guy of the trust that was frotac that was the guy that was like banging tilk's missus back in season two really same i knew act- i'd seen that bloke's face before but i didn't same actor from. wow okay yeah oh no wonder so, yeah okay right yeah he's always getting away of tilk's women that's his thing yeah, and it's funny, like, as it went on and they started to be introduced and then, you know, like, the boyfriend and she's, like, she's waiting outside, he's dead and, you know, they don't go into the apartment. I'll just leave with me now. And I'm like, oh, maybe that's what happens to her. She's part of this this group. And then we revealed, revealed to be the trust. No, oh, that oh, could have been cool that she was, like, a honeypot plant. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's what it is. Or maybe she's part of, you know, this agency that's trying to make him look bad. And it ended up being none of that, but a little bit of a mix of a lot of it too, where, you know, it was kind of, you know, the, the, the trust were trying to set him up so that they could use and blah, blah, blah. And then you got this other agency mm-hmm. that thankfully didn't not believe him at all. Like they actually started to, th- I forget which, whether it was O'Neill or whoever at one stage, you go, look, even they're starting to say, okay, this looks weird. This is looking pretty sus. So, yeah, like, it, as Brennan's always saying, like, Earth, Earth-based episodes are a bit annoying because, like, you're watching a show called Stargate and while I enjoy character stuff and whatever, and if that does mean that we have to stay on Earth, so be it. But I actually, I don't know, I quite like this episode. If anything, the, the trust stuff was like, ah, oh, whatever, okay. It's, it's nice to see that they're moving on a little bit from the NID. There's this mm. rogue, rogue, rogue agency sort of thing. But then the whole... Yeah, Carter and Pete thing just seemed like such a weird yeah. add-on. And it'd be different if they wrote it a little bit. When I say they, like it's Peter and I love Peter DeLuise and I'm banging on a lot. But when you think... You love you Peter have- DeLuise, do you? Maybe she go and check out the first ones. <laughs> written and directed by him. Super good episode, mate. Yeah, You'll love it. Well You'll love it. Trap. <laughs> like, the idea that, you know, we have these parallel stories in this episode where it is about these two relationships and maybe it was just convenient that hey Peter's writing an episode he's like oh I'm going to write another one about my brother's Mm. character or it was like hey let's show what two different relationships might look like where this alien is having a very real human connection and and positive Mm. reaction to this relationship with with a human character when you've got these other two human characters that just can't quite seem to get on the same page you know pete pete loves sam but sam's like i love him i think but i don't know whether i really want to be with him and all this sort of stuff so that part of it is interesting but i just didn't feel like they really focused on that enough to nail it or maybe they did focus on it but didn't nail it at the same time mm. I'm, I'm not sure it just it didn't seem to gel as well as when you do watch those great episodes of television where you've got 
th this where two characters is doing the same as another two characters and the parallels just really work to tell this interesting story about the exact same thing but anyway well it's interesting you said a little bit earlier about you know the trust and all that sort of stuff and being someone who hasn't seen it in a long time i'm glad you kind of clicked onto the trust because this episode was actually shown out of order so next week's episode, well, next week's episode of SG One um, Covenant um, actually is the episode that introduces the trust oh. and mentions them the first time, and then that's how Daniel knows when Daniel's in the back of the truck in this episode. He goes, "You guys are XNID, aren't you? Don't you call yourselves the Trust now?" Right. Yeah. It's actually I found Mr. Chef. So weird. Yeah, it's actually Mr. Sheffield next week who who yeah. first tells us about about spoiler, trust. Though. <laughs> yes. That's what I was wondering Have we ever seen We'd never heard of the term the trust yet yeah. It was just so no. weird how it was just a one off yeah. So you reckon they the filmed it before thing... that yeah they, yeah they definitely did They um They were supposed to show in the opposite way The only thing I can think of Is and this ties into What we're doing next week with Atlantis With Poisoning the Well and the whole continuity that I've sort of been tracking between like the airing order and what, you know, that Reddit list that everyone seems to think is correct, which actually really isn't. Because <laughs> in this episode, they talk about how this kind of takes place over two weeks. Well, in, next, in uh, the episode that showed the same time as this of Atlantis poisoning the well, we'll talk about it next week. But Shepard says to that captured Wraith, he's like, we've been having these chats for the last two weeks. So I'm wondering if it was just their way to try and sync up the mm -hmm. episodes by flipping Covenant and Affinity and they just forgot the trust thing. I don't know. Because you'd, you'd think they'd split it up too, given that last week's SG-1 episode was Avatar, which was a Tilk-heavy episode. Yeah. We've got another Tilk-heavy episode here. you think they would have split that up with Covenant, mm. but apparently not. Yeah, weird. Okay. Yeah, nice. but no, um, Joe Malozzi has confirmed sort of since the show's finished, he confirmed on, like, Gateworld and stuff like that that these episodes were shown out of order. Didn't say why, though. Yeah, how does that even happen? Like, that's this just seems mm. really strange to me, like, especially the way that TV would have been so... Well, given how good they've been, when you think about... We were talking about the start of the season, like, they kind of shot the first four episodes all out of order and in a weird sort of thing because they were banking all their, their Richard Anderson days. Yeah. So it's weird that they can do that, but then for some reason, yeah, these two aired on different dates. Like I was saying before, remember a couple of seasons ago, I had the Earthbound app checklist, and I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remember definitely these ones are on it. So Carter breaks into an apartment with a lockpick. Check. <laughs> She does it in every Earth fan app. Random agents in black, got it. Rogan ID, got it. Tied yep. up in a warehouse, got it. So <laughs> yeah. he that's that weird. same warehouse. They, they use that, that, that warehouse <laughs> so many times. <laughs> he didn't disappoint. Take on Joe and Paul and he, yeah, he nailed yeah. it. Yeah. Um, maybe they got together over the weekend before this episode was written. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, maybe they, yeah, maybe they edited Pete it. Pete was just like, Pete was like, oh, I could write an Earth fan episode. Just watch me. Yeah. Yeah, wow. So I just think we were talking about before how Tilk just dealt with those civilians like they were just flies, swatting mm. them away. I just imagine like in that scene where uh, Tilk tells O'Neill that he didn't kill Doug. Yeah. And he was like, all right, well, I believe you. See you later. And on his way out, Tilk's like, hey, O'Neill, by the way, why, why are all the civilians on your planet not trained in combat? Yeah, like, yeah. This, it'd just be so weird for him. He'd just be like, oh, my God, these three mm. dudes, buff. I was expecting a challenge. <laughs> just aced them. Just monster. Nah, just some roided up crackheads. You know, it still seems weird in a way when Dan... I mean, it made sense because I guess they haven't ever have really had a need for him to learn it himself. But the fact that Daniel did have to have that conversation with him saying, hey, yeah, maybe it's better if you just don't get involved with people. And he's like, Why? something is wrong he's like yeah mm, the way we like to do it though as humans is just not care about stuff that doesn't really like just affect us like we just let it happen and it actually and it, in a way like in a way with a lot of things with Tilk it's like 
telling a child something and if it doesn't make sense they'll just look at you and tell you that like mm. here here daniel jackson is a really nice guy who wants to do good things telling teal yeah if you see something wrong you don't have to help out because you know people feel awkward about it and the fact that he did take that to heart so when he sees like someone get their bag stolen he's like no no no, i don't have to do that thinking that's the way that everyone thinks and you're like no mate you're the guy that helps people out like i love that he was becoming some kind of like cult you know local hero like that like i'm like that's probably what teal would do he wouldn't he can't switch off that that need to help and the fact that he doesn't even have to get physical to be able to help so again like a much simpler way than the last um teal episode um on many levels but we do get another step up in learning about what his character is we're putting him again a fish out of water as he's been for seven years now he's living in an apartment in the middle of the city if you put him back into the into the water what what would happen on chulak if there was a dispute like that would he come out and throw start throwing fruit at people like it doesn't make (laughs) any sense to me why daniel had no he'd throw a knife yeah well why did daniel have to explain like this is the way humans interact it's like hang on it's just people in a certain area in a certain country act that way not yeah. necessarily I don't, and and the whole uh, uh, colonel dick kendrick comes in <laughs> complaining about too there's been another incident what he's helping people like i don't understand why that's yeah. a problem yeah oh, and no. it's not he doesn't yeah. have a symbiote anymore mm. you even see that he doesn't have a bandage when he's when he's up and walking yeah. around, he's just he's got a navel. Like the... He's got a belly button all I of feel a like sudden. that's one of... <laughs> I feel like that's one of the main reasons they let him off base now is because he doesn't have a symbiote anymore. So they're like, Oh, okay, there's no chance of your symbiote popping out and um, taking over somebody. Yeah, and so it's not like it's we'll um, you... alien technology to have a gold infused tattoo because he explained yeah. it. They take a knife, dig out the wo- dig it out and then pour gold into the wound. Yeah, so it's not yeah. like it's highly technological tattoo. And Mozambique is like, I guess, the perfect cover because, like, you've heard of that country, but you know fuck all about it. So probably in Africa <laughs> yeah, exactly. or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like no one. Tell really- you what, Tilk was in a nice neighborhood though. Like he was in a pretty upmarket neighborhood from the look of it. Mm. I mean, there was. I mean, what, what would he have done if he was in a bad neighborhood and there were like homeless people, or would he walk past them or would be helping them out as well? He would have just been throwing them cash. He's like, I don't know what to do with this yeah. stuff. Oh, they keep giving it yeah, to me, give it, and I don't. They've been giving it to me for years, years, and I don't know what to do with it. I've been wiping my ass with it. <laughs> you have like a million do you reckon, dollars by now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you reckon if uh, if Apophis was still alive, that he'd be insulted or impressed, like that? There's now a kid with his symbol on his skateboard rolling around, yeah. like yeah, British I found Columbia. That a bit weird, right? Because obviously, Tilk, he he knows it's a it's a symbol for enslavement, but. He knows and the kid doesn't know that, so he's yeah. like, "All right, yeah. respect, thanks, bro." I like that actually that he didn't that he, he knows enough and he's learned enough about human behavior to go, "Oh, and no, he's done that in an innocent way." That and he's just like, "I'm honored." I'm like, "Fuck, man, how much must that hurt?" Not even to accept it, but to say, "I am honored that you would mark yourself with that willingly." Like, mm. oh my, fuck, man, you you you're doing a lot through a fake smile there, and pretty work doing it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not even like. Based on the rest of the writing of this episode, I'm not convinced Peter DeLuise really figured that bit into the script, but it worked mm. the way that Chris Judge delivered it. Yeah, it wasn't on the page. Chris definitely brought that in his performance in like the nuanced way that he, he said that, I think, yeah. We, we were talking about getting Lincoln on this podcast before and he wasn't too pumped about the episode, but I, I always remember this episode as, like Maddie said before, the Teal episode where him and Chris did get it on. Um, paraphrasing there, Maddie, but the <laughs> I have a kind of a theory. I think Chris is actually a black widow. Oh, hang on, hang on. Sorry, can I just point out like a that black that widow, baby? I, I swear to God, I'm like I've just I'm in, I'm in a very dirty room at the moment. We like we got new carpet <clears> yesterday. We entered a whole room into this room, right? a whole house into this room. There's shit everywhere. There's stickers. My kids have been playing with stickers, right? I literally just found something stuck to my foot. It's a Black Widow sticker. As I pulled uh, this disgusting sticker off my foot that I just stood on, as I pulled this picture of Scarlett Johansson, you said the words Black Widow. Holy shit. Whoa. Holy I've shit. Got it written down Holy here. shit. It's not like I pretended. That was okay. It. That's weird and feral, but go on. Nice. 
That's like our deja vu moments at the tuck shop, man. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where Brent and I just we, we were just in the future, Maddie. It wasn't a big deal. <laughs> the lines, though. We'd be there going, we've seen this before. Yeah, we saw a black cat across the hallway. To me, like I always thought, you know, I was always impressed by Erica Durant's um, caliber, mm. acting caliber, <laughs> and her pipes and stuff. So for me, it was this time around watching her knowing that she killed Doug mm. and then she's up against, she didn't call the cops, which is weird. Yeah. He just kind of leant up against Tilk's apartment and was like, Hey, let's just go away. And like, um, you never speak about this again. And you know, I'll give you my <laughs> pussy. Like, it's not a problem. That's the way it felt <laughs> like to me. I'm like, Oh Jesus, Tilk. Like if if he if Tilt wasn't so horny, there's no way he would have gone with it. I know it was an interesting answer that she got. Like when he when he said when she said, "Let's get out of here," he's like, "Perhaps tomorrow." And I'm like, "Oh, mm. dude, like you're being so nice and saying, <laughs> hell no." <laughs> yeah. I don't know Earth crazy, but I know that's crazy. I'm not leaving. <laughs> did um, did he she did. actually kill he him did. though? Yeah, because did she like actually the, kill him? I thought it. I thought they yeah. left it very ambiguous because uh, the NID the, agent said we've got the video proof. She um, Tilk indirectly killed him because if she didn't teach Krista the choke hold, then she wouldn't have killed him. That's what the line. And that it was right. self defense. So we got video of self defense. We saw an opportunity with a dead body there to make it look like Tilk did it. Yeah. Oh, so that's why they then tampered with the body by dragging it over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I always thought it was more like, I, I never sort of believed them when they sort of said that. I wasn't sure whether they were telling the truth or not. My kind of thought, like, maybe, like, she, like, you know, did, like, a throat punch or whatever and, you know, knocked him out or mm. had him near death or whatever and he could have been saved, but the NID sort of went in and, no, and because um, finished how- the job. Remember how Tilk's like, I believe we are being followed. And she's like, by who? And he's like, maybe by Doug. And she's like, ah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I believe not. she definitely put him down. I believe she definitely put him down. I always just kind of thought, yeah, like she sort of three quarters of the way, like nearly killed him, but then the, the trust sort of finished him off or something. I did like that. You have to take that dialogue for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the car where they're saying, oh, we're going to get followed. And, and he's like, I think I could lose him if I just speed and drive dangerously. And she's like, yeah, sick. And then it cuts straight to them going into a motel door. And I'm like, am I just a shit? Like, Teal, like, very rarely drives. And yet he can, he just, like, he got out of their sights with no concern whatsoever. Like, it wasn't even like a quick mm. turn. They drive past when they're hidden behind a dumpster or something. Like, he just got away. Don't ask questions. We need to get to the motel, guys. Yeah. As soon as I opened that door, that motel room, I was like, oh, my God, he's going to split her in half on that bed. <laughs> this, is like, this is like Terminator 1 with, with Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor all over again. Like, this is where sex happens, guys. This is the sex <laughs> motel. This is the Motel 6. <laughs> I feel like the trust went a long way around, though. They went through all that just so that they'd have some leverage and hostages so they could make Daniel translate some ancient or Gua'uld or whatever. Mm. That was a weird turn of events that oh, I forgot about, to be really honest. Mm. That's, that yeah, that's a long Daniel, way to go. Daniel and then Carter and and um, what's his name? Pete. Like yeah. it started off being a Tilk episode, then just changed to a Carter yeah. Pete Daniel episode. Yeah. And then the weird the weird connect that the whole thing at the end is they wanted to get Osiris's Al Kesh that's been sitting up in orbit since Chimera. So we don't since like know that yet, Maddie. Jesus. Don't we? No. <laughs> I can confirm as a recent watcher, no, we don't know that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> it was just it was a mystery. <laughs> they beam out. What else are they gonna do? Uh, oh, it, oh, no, they that didn't makes it even worse because you hear it though. You hear it and you yeah, and you see yeah. the flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, and Pete's like, does that happen all the time? She's like, eh, no, but yeah. <laughs> well, that that makes the sin even worse because it's like we get it takes even like if we're going that thing's been sitting in orbit since we first met Pete. Pete's now proposed to Carter 
and it's still in orbit, and then we don't get a payoff for that until what? Red alert later in the season or something? Like, that's shit. <laughs> yeah, but we're not meant to know that yet. But that's cool. That's cool. Whoops. That's where they went, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, I found that weird too. That I, I guess the first meeting, because um, they'd already contacted him, and he's like, "Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about with this whole Gould business." I'm like, "Mate, they've got your private number. Like, given the benefit of the doubt, they probably know stuff they shouldn't." But then in the park, and he's there going, "You're the only guy that can decipher this, and you're going to do it because we're going to make you." He goes, "Nah, I'm pretty sure I'm not." And he goes, "Yeah, you're the only guy who can, so we're going to really force you because we have to force you because you're the only guy who can do it." <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, otherwise we're fucked and he's like no nah, I've got some place to be and they're like I've got three snipers on you I'm ready to kill you it's like a second ago I was the only guy that could help you and now you're just willing to kill me um, which is or that was a pretty boss move him going oh, I don't believe you he goes alright Puts the coffee cup down. Uh, sniper one, take the coffee Doosh! like straight through could have just been a magician too it's not like yeah. <laughs> he could have had this like string on the cup and stuff Yeah, like you never know <laughs> But why, why the hell would Daniel Jackson ever not go to Jack with that? Mm. That makes yeah. no sense. We'll, we'll know. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll just go by myself. Daniel Jackson's missing. What the fuck, Daniel? Yeah. Um, at least yeah. talk and, about it. And how often are you checking in with your staff? Like, it didn't seem like a long time had passed. But like, well, they're starting to think something's happening. Why? Daniel's missing. I'm like, he's probably yeah, gone oh, yeah, for an yeah. hour. Yeah, they like, reckon Tuuk's innocent now, so it's, he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so dumb. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Like, like I, I did really enjoy the episode, but like, it is just such a mixed bag of stuff. It's, it's enjoyable to watch. Like, it's not boring, but when you start pulling at threads, it all kind of tends to unravel. Yeah. The two, the two, like apartment stuff is just too. It's just gold. It's just so good that you just yeah. see, look, look past everything else that's bad about it. Mm. All that was missing, and I feel like Peter DeLuise probably would have done it and ended up on the cutting room floor, is like Tilk in his kitchen in an apron and like a you know, chef's hat, <laughs> chef's hat. <laughs> just like baking. Cooking Daniels. Like, like just <laughs> going full Swedish chef. A brundy, 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 brundy. Like, I love that he's just uh, sitting back watching lifestyle shows though because he's like, oh, it's... Uh, it's gold chic with an African, Western African flavor. Mm. He's like, yeah, he's like, there is this particular channel that helps with, uh, you know, home design or whatever. And Daniel, yeah. like, oh, I'm more into history. And I'm like, of course you are. We know that, obviously. Mm. Meanwhile, Tilk, yeah. Tilk's watching Martha Stewart. And he's yeah. like- I love that. I love that Tilk's sitting at home going, oh, you're right. I could probably put an awning up there. Oh, you're right. I could be baking mm. cookies. Like, brilliant. Like, what else? <laughs> All I need was Tilk to be like, it's a good thing. Mm, (laughs) but then i'm gonna go practice my like full death trap um, martial arts in the park well that's fine martha stewart's gonna go get high with snoop dogg so it all it all balances out in the wash yeah maybe that's what maybe that's the pilot episode of his like he watched that first and he's like oh Oh, snoop dogg's not in all this this sucks so what how did it end again he just moved out and left yeah that was just the last shot of those guys looking at him Going off into the, the horizon. Like, that sucks. Because, like, okay, they met under bad circumstances, so it probably wasn't going to last the distance. But at the same time, there was enough there. Like, you know, she fell in love with him genuinely just because he was a nice guy and him the same way back. Like, it just seems like such a missed opportunity in a way to... I mean, I, I don't know. I guess, right? you know, we're also seeing a relationship of Carter and Pete... And the start of their relationship was him not knowing what she really was. And then it would be the same with this relationship if they kept it up. It was like, I don't care what your story is. I'm just happy you're here, as she says in the motel. And it's like, "Mm, yeah, okay, but I'm also an alien. And I used to have another smaller, different alien in my stomach. (laughs) Um, I feel like you'd be like a little bit weird about that. So Mm. I guess it would just be rinse, repeat with that sort of shit. Like, oh, they're not going to find out for it. Then he's going to tell her, is that person going to be okay with his secret? But we haven't explored Tilk with the human relationship. Now that we have, yeah. Plus, what did he do with all his furniture? Like, he obviously was packing up a lot of his knickknacks and stuff, and that stupid kid broke something on his skateboard. It was furnished. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I was like, I was like, is Tilk gonna be selling stuff on Gumtree, or is he like on Craigslist trying to trying to haggle like the price of a couch because he can't take it back to the base with him? 
Make me an offer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's so good. This is actually my favorite line of this of this episode. So you're drunk. <laughs> Just go home, no, please. No, no, I ain't going nowhere. That's- is there a problem? Oh, this, this is a private conversation. If it were private, you would not be conducting it in the hallway, nor speaking so loudly. It's all right, Mrs. Connors. Just go back inside. Do you require assistance? No, I'm okay. Oh. Who the hell is this guy? His name is Tilk. He's my neighbor. Tilk? <laughs> like, what kind of a crazy name is that? He just moved here from Mozambique. Uh, no doubt. Krista has requested that you leave. I suggest you comply. You better check yourself <laughs> before you get hurt. I have checked. <laughs> I suggest you leave before it is you. So good. I have checked. That's the best. <laughs> it's such a good two a lot of like, or not after. It was another scene or so after. It was like, if you hurt her again, I will kill yeah. you. Yeah, you and I, I'm pretty sure it was that scene. Oh, no. Like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, because she. The bruised arm. Yeah, the bruised arm. He's like, yeah. have you, have you, <laughs> what was the wording he used? Oh, so you've stopped taking him or stopped. Rece- oh, you know, you've stopped receiving you him. You stopped receiving him. I'm, I'm like, like, wow. What? That's- wow, man. <laughs> that seems like a re- I mean, I get what you're saying, but that's a really weird way to put it. Mm. Is that how you all speak on Chew yeah, Really? It's kinky as f. Yeah. Jesus. I felt like that kid on the skateboard was like a video game side character. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like, you just, especially the part where they're doing like the. The Jafar Kung Fu. Yeah. And he, he's just holding a skateboard and a burrito and he's like, hey. It's like a, <laughs> from a Spider-Man game. Hey, Spider, you're the man. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the kid you kind of go to to start a mission off. Like, yeah. Those guys over there, they steal that lady's purse. Here's an <laughs> avocado. Or he could go full Syndrome from The Incredibles. Mm. Like, you know how Syndrome started out as a big fan of Mr. Incredible? Yes. yes then left him behind. He could be so disappointed that Tilk left him, he's turned into a supervillain. Yep. Yeah. Boom. He's been holding Krista captive this entire time. <laughs> yeah. And just every day he just walks up and smacks her straight in the face with his skateboard with the Tilt <laughs> logo on it. The, the Apophis she logo on that it. that symbol. <laughs> she takes the yeah. chunks off, obviously. Yes, yeah, yeah. He's not a monster. <laughs> not that vicious. <laughs> I've got some questions here, but I've only got four. Well, that probably works out because last week you asked me six. Did I? Yeah, in in during the live oh. like recording, I'm like this seems weird or whatever, and then editing it, I, I like listen to it and I'm like counting and I'm like I I answered two and then I didn't answer two and then I answered another two and I'm like nah, it couldn't have been, couldn't have been. You know, I actually oh, might still be wrong, <laughs> but I'm like I, I'm just surprised we both we you managed to ask six and I managed to answer six still within thirty seconds. I was yeah, just right. really impressed. Oh, man. It's time to find out if Mitch has been paying attention. And uh, oh, special, shit. special shout out goes to Damo Edwards, Owen Ellis, and Ashley, the OG, for contributing nice. with some uh, trivia questions here. Oh, very nice, so, Mitch. This is yes. one for you, baby. SG One. Woo! Taking the week off. Ah. That's why. Hang on, we've we been doing that. Oh no, we've been doing Mitch's Atlantis. It's okay. He can do. He can do this one as well. It's fine. Time to find out if Maddie's been paying attention. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I've been selected. Shouldn't have said anything. And withdrawn. <laughs> Sorry, right, Maddie. Thirty seconds on the. Oh, f- uh, actually, special shout out to Toasty. She's just come in with an extra question live. Oh, nice. Oh, whoa. Uh, do, 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 this this is, just uh, in. Mate. Breaking news. All right, five questions. Thirty seconds on the clock. Your time starts oh. after the first question. In Affinity, what is Tilk's apartment number? Uh, six. Incorrect. Uh, what does Tilk throw at the purse thief? An avocado. Correct. What country does Tilk claim to be from? Mozambique. Correct. What is the new name of the rogue NID agents? The Trust. Correct. What Jafar technique does Krista ask Tilk to teach her in the park? 
Ah, oh, shell kick them wrong. I oh, no, I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> Incorrect. Oh, and what number is his apartment? If you mm. go back to that, six. run out of time. Run out of time. Close. Four oh six is the apartment number. No, that was that was there. That was Damo, <laughs> mate. Blame him for that. Half um, half you got points. Avocado, I got six. You got to have Mo- Mozambique, the trust, and then the Jafar technique in the park was Loch Nell. Locknell, oh, Nell. the great Jafar technique that, of Locknell, pivotal technique that's <laughs> nothing like art um, that never gets mentioned ever again, never has before. Yeah, it doesn't has been ever since before, <laughs> and doesn't look like Tai Chi at all. Is definitely not a blatant rip off of Tai Chi. <laughs> so the more I think about this episode, I always think back with great fondness. Been really in watching it again. It was. Is this the worst Peter DeLuise episode ever written? Every point that I went to make during this podcast talking about the episode were things I didn't like. It was like, I know it's written by Peter DeLuise, but like it was just one of those things. Where I'm like, I'm surprised that that made the cut. Like, like I was saying before, it just seemed like such a messy episode. There was just so many different elements just thrown in that it's, it's, it'd be different if they were trying to wrap up storylines at the end of a season they knew they were getting cancelled. But this is, it's episode seven of the season. Like, it's like, you don't just slow down for Christ's sake. It's you just know, proposed. And- what the f? <laughs> like, I actually forgot that was in this episode. Yeah. That's, nah. that's how much I concentrate on the Tilk apartment. It's the Tilk yeah. apartment episode. <laughs> that's what it is to me. Everything else can yeah. f- off. <laughs> I I think you're right. I think it could be the worst. And believe it or not, he's only got, Peter DeLise has only got three more episodes or two more episodes that he wrote on for SG1. Stop it. Yeah, he only writes Gemini and uh, he has the story credit for It's Good to Be King. Oh, I love that episode. And that's it. Yeah. And then he goes on, in SG, he writes four episodes of Atlantis. Yeah, right. But, yeah, you look at uh, the first ones. So, oh, no, hold on a second. Peter DeLuise wrote Entity. So, case closed. This is the second worst episode of SG-1 he's ever written. That was, sorry, Entity, was that the Carter robot one? Yeah. That was oh, the yeah, ele- that can, electrical, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, that can go f*** itself. This is second yeah, worst. Yeah. Shout, <laughs> shout out to all the feminists out there, but that episode suck balls. Oh, yeah, Twitter, guess what? <laughs> we got some Twitter the, uh, hate for saying it was shit. The Entity... <laughs> Entity sucks. Oh, Come that's at me, right. Twitter. That's Come right. at me. Yeah. The episode sucks. What do you mean you hate women? What? what do yeah. You mean? I hate women because the Entity and the Light are not the best episodes of SG1 ever written. <laughs> Suck my left nut. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's episode 164 of Get Into Gate Affinity. We will be back next week. Back to the Pegasus Galaxy. We're talking poisoning the well for episode 165 Mm. of Get Into Gate. In the meantime, you can check out all of our old podcasts. If you are a new listener, just search your favorite podcasting outlet, Get Into Gate, a Stargate podcast. Hit us up on the socials, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Get Into Gate, a Stargate podcast. You can find a Get Into Gate uh, channel, forum, chat, discussion group whatever the friggin hell it might be called on discord but there's plenty of good people on there Mm. uh, just talking about the podcast and talking about what we're talking about in the podcast so taking the discussion further which is actually uh, really cool so if there's things you want to talk about when you listen to us talk about it in the podcast jump on a discord and uh and and chat about it with a bunch of other stargate fans which is yeah they are there hey look guys party last week i um jumped on yeah Get out a few of the guys there, which is good fun. Yeah, nice. nice. Not gonna look, not saying I'll do it every week, but um, it's good fun. Yeah. If you'd like us to have a great <laughs> affinity for you, jump on our Patreon, guys. Yeah, we're talking. Gotcha. If you uh, if you have a pipe plumbing problem, then um, jump on board. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean, give a massive shout out to our newest patrons, uh, Nathan Davis. Dave, oh. Uh, Sean Fails Dugan. Shout out to Sean Fails Dugan. Oh, Dukes. Um, I had no well- idea what you just said, Matty. <laughs> Sean Fails Dugan or Duggan. Maybe Duggan. It could be Duggan. It's Dugan. We'll see how we go. D U G G A N. Dugan. 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 It's like Josh Dugan, the great Cronulla Shark. Well, there you go. Of course. <laughs> oh, you don't still claim him as a Raider, mate. Never did. How could I forget that, uh, that legend? <laughs> Where's his statue? 
Um, and also a shout out, a welcome back to Stephen and a very special shout out to uh, Kenneth Pricer, who obviously got very, very drunk and jumped on the Patreon. Probably check your credit card statement, Muddy. You've um, you've gone a bit nuts, but thank you. We appreciate it. No, he's done the right thing. He, he'll be on the oh. uh, next exclusive tier for Patreon, which we'll Oh, mate, we'll he's got my kick. In a few weeks' time. I'm sending him my kick, so I'm doing private vids for him. Like, I mean, you know. <laughs> he's getting everything. Otherwise, you can check us out individually. I'm Mitch underscore Lewis on Twitter and Instagram. Maddie, where you at? At High Pitch Maddie. Nice, Brendel. I'm at the Bren Gibson. On Twitter and Instagram, course. mate. Both. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, got you. Get involved. <laughs> Might jump on TikTok later. Shit, yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Too many apps. Nah, mate, not for me. I like it. Get into Geek.